What are your earliest memories of the Vietnam War? So much. Um, well, uh, when my village were up in in the countryside of Quang Ai, near the mountain, uh, and um, a few years after I was born, the village, we, uh, um, the, the South Vietnamese lost the village. It's insecure village. Insecure. And then we had to move to the secure area. So um, uh, at that time, I think of, about, about five or six years old. So we, we lost it all. My parents lost it all. Our land, our home, everything, uh, and things like that. So, uh, and then we came to a school village and then there, that way the war, I, I, I saw growing up with the war going on. So your village, basically everybody moved from your village to a different village. Yes, most people, but some people, they didn't want it to go because they was, you know, they have other sign which is, uh, they listen to, uh, you know, to the uh, job side, to the propaganda. And so they stay there and they advocate the other side. So the, the Viet Cong persuaded some to stay in the, in the village? Yes, yes. And did the Viet Cong then take over that village or, or did the village well, just the, remain uh, empty? So there at that area become insecure. Uh, um, um, so they get still fighting back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And 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 my my home was uh, got a few bombs, were exploded on my on my home. Wow. Yes. Do you remember moving the village? Was were you were you helped mostly by the the South Vietnamese army, by the Americans, by a combination? Well, I was very small I, when we moved from um, uh, that village to the, or, the, the orig, original where we came from. Um, uh, I was very little. So I remember my, my brother-in-law who was in the uh, oven in the um, South Vietnamese office. He helped the whole family to relocate to the secure village. Now it could go to the province, um, the city of Phong An. So you move and then, you know, of course you're, you're developing and, and you're just growing up with this awareness that right, right. there's insecurity, there's warfare. What are some of the memories you have then? You, you said that you, you witnessed the Tet Offensive. What, what right. do you remember about well, the Well, be, before the Tet Offensive, uh, let's, um, let me take you back to this night of my childhood. I remember many nights we enjoyed playing with my friend in my village. We had good time playing with my friends under the moonlight was so beautiful. But suddenly that night we were playing an unfamiliar noise erupted in the middle of playground. <clears throat> Which is the machine guns. The sound of the machine gun had totally erased the peaceful atmosphere and turned, it turned the night into the horror night in my village. And then yeah, that, exactly what my friend said. Restaurant! My friend shouted. I ran quickly to my home, uh, and my whole family rushed into the bunker inside our home. The shooting continued for the next several minutes long. I realized that Viet Cong had launched an attack to my village. A horrible night was over, but much tragic news spread throughout my village the next morning. My worst news was my best friend's father got shot and killed in the night. That's what one of the many nights of my village under attack. The invading soldiers of North Vietnam destroyed families in my village. They had no regard for peace or families for, for the life of the innocent people. Even though I was just a little boy, I re still remember very well during the national holiday celebration of 1968. On the first very hours of this new year, they violated the ceasefire agreement and launched a massive surprising attack against the people of South Vietnam. And that was the third offensive. But then the, the South Vietnamese and the American officers stood up together. They pushed back the barbaric demons, defeated the communists in the third offensive 1968. They gradually drove back the new invasion from the north for the third offensive. 
the people of the South trying to resume their no normal life. However, the North Vietnam Committee continued the evil goal of taking over the internationally recognized free and independent sovereign nation of South Vietnam. And then the war went on. I saw my Vietnam veteran there. I saw him in my village, fighting, fighting the enemy. I saw them standing tall, heroically, with South Vietnamese soldiers defending us against the communists. I saw them helping the sick and the injured South Vietnamese people. I saw them protecting my village and making me and all the children laugh. They brought the freedom and security to my village. I know they were just serving and fighting not only for their, for their own country, but also for more than 15 million men and women and children of South Vietnam. They, they the reason I said they they make me laugh and all the children laugh because they we, they gave us candies, they gave us goodies. Uh, that's how it happened. So I saw many American GIs there. So you remember the Americans, I, you know, veterans often tell me that they would give candy, they would give C rations to the kids and, and you right, C ration, right. You're a child, so, you know, I understand you're not going to see everything, but could you, do you remember a difference once America, once all American military forces are gone by 1973, and then the South Vietnamese forces are on their own, could you tell the difference um, once the American forces were gone? Even though was, I was just a very small boy at that time, um, I'd be barely about, about, about 10 years of age. Uh, I remember the time before and after when the, uh, the American left. When after 73, the, 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 the South Vietnamese armed forces brutally got hammered. And uh, in my village, there are many people who was in the office and their family, and their sons and, and you know fathers and things like that. And they marched um, left and right and they got killed. They got bad news, they got injured. My, my own my, my own brother is also um, an urban and he got injured. Uh, so, so yes, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, even though I have no uh, uh, really uh, a great perspective of war at that time, but then um, uh, the, uh, uh, the security, the, um, the fighting was totally go downhill for the South Vietnamese people. Once the, when, after the Americans left. After the Americans left. What do you remember about the um, the spring of 1975? Of course, Saigon Falls in 75. What what memories do you have of that? It's a horrible uh, memories that I had. I remember that morning, which is the fall of Quang Ai, which is my, where, where I live. It's, a, it's, a, it's about, uh, uh, I think, several months before the fall of Saigon. But, um, I, um, before the fall of the name, then the fall of Quang Ai, which is they, they, uh, my, my, my province, uh, we lost the province of Quang Ai first before the name and then Saigon. But um, I remember that morning, that morning that um, they, uh, the, the soldiers, the, 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 the North um, Army soldiers flooded in my area. And then that morning, when I heard the noise, of the tank T-54, the Russian tanks, rumbling on the Highway 1, where my village is, was. And I, I, me and all my friends was ran, we, we, we were running into the street and trying to see what's going on. We were just kids. And I saw on Highway 1 with the T-54 tanks, a series of them, the many of them, and then on two, both sides was the, 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 the NVA, the, 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 the North soldiers, the North Vietnamese soldiers. And they were gunning with AK-47 on both sides. 
on the street is the scariest thing I ever witnessed. Were they just shooting at anybody? Well, at that time, I, when they saw us, but and they know that uh, we were just civilian, and 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 at that time, there no retaliation whatsoever because oh. uh, the the the, the South, uh, South Vietnamese officers were got defeated already, so they know. It's, but they they was ready to kill, they were ready to sue. I see with the tank and with the soldiers. Yeah. What happened to your family? Because you said your brother served with the Army of South Vietnam. Um, and we know that after North Vietnam takes over South Vietnam, many South Vietnamese go into re-education camps. Um, what, what happened to your family? Well, uh, let, let me correct back uh, the term called re-education camps. Mm -hmm. It's not the re-education camps. What it means is they're trying to uh, um, tell people that they uh, re educate, re educate people, but there's nothing to re educate people. They send all the, um, the, 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 the South Vietnamese soldiers uh, and all anybody related to the uh, South Vietnamese government to prisons, hardcore prisons. And that's what it was. Okay. So, my brother, at that time, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't around in my village. He was in the south, he was stationed in the south. And then um, uh, by the time of the fall of Saigon, which is uh, April 1975, he was staying with my sister in the south, in Bung So, um, uh, um, but then everything changed. Basically, of course, um, black to white. Many people uh, um, got, uh, got 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 captured or, 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 or arrested or whatever the case may be, so they can go to the prisons. Were any of your family members sent to prison? Um, um, my brothers was uh, uh, sent to a prison because he's not an, an officer. He just a, a regular soldier, so he, he was in 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 in, uh, in the prison for a short period of time. Okay. In the south. Yeah. But the, the good thing is he was in the south because the south uh, is a little easier for the atmosphere. But my village was a hardcore uh, communist, uh, and people really, you know, they they brutal. They they they, they if if. They could kill anybody at any time for any reasons. Wow. Uh, whatever their feeling, their emotion was, because they was in their brain, the, 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 the South uh, Vietnam people was bad people. Okay, wow. and especially the soldiers. You write that you had to make believe that you were happy to live under communist rule. Oh, yes. Was, was this at school? Well, in every way, in every aspect of life. In my school, I actually, uh, I, I was um, first, I, I was first forbid, forbidden to go to school until uh, later on, um, several years later, and then I was able to come, uh, to come back to school. I was naive, and I was half the voice of the student trying to uh, demonstrate that um, we was uh, brutally um, work under uh, the school, under the government. And then my parents got invited to their office for a, a long talk. And I got suspended as a student at that time. Because you were- Because of my voice. Resisting a little bit, saying you- Yeah, just, just, just saying the truth, like, you know, why we have to do this, why we have to do that. And we each other kids, we each other children. Mm. thing like that mm. but 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 you're right because we had to be tense we had to make believe that you know because their propaganda are everywhere everywhere and everybody got uh happened to come to uh, to, to to show their uh, um, um opposed to their propaganda it's not a good news mm. they are yeah, they, 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 they will look at you, they will, they, they will uh, see you at, 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 in a black, blacklist and, and, and their family, and they, they constantly 
watching your family. Mm. Now, some South Vietnamese do not like the communists. They do not like the government of Hanoi, but they they do admire Ho Chi Minh. How about how about you? What is your feeling about Ho Chi Minh? I don't know about you that some people like Ho Chi Minh, and unless, uh, unless that person is is basically brainwashed or uh, uh, listen to their propaganda or work for their government. I, 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 other than that, I don't know who whoever the South Vietnamese would like Ho Chi Minh. No. no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not at all. No, no, that make that that has to be clear. Uh, unless people brainwash, I know nothing about living in the dark. Then they they they, they will do. They will do whatever it takes uh, the, to you know to what uh, to, to, uh, to to protect uh, their propaganda. Okay, but yeah. but uh, uh, as I grow up, especially when I uh, escape and came here and do more learning and and and, and study about the a little bit about the war and the, the political uh, arena and everything like that, then I know exactly who 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 Chi Minh was. Mm. Yes. What and what? What was he then? How would you describe Ho Chi Minh? <laughs> well, it's it in in di di different uh, uh, time period. I believe, yes, I believe. At first, he was a good guy. He was a good guy trying to get like uh, uh, any other patriot uh, um, 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 uh, person who trying to uh, you know to uh, uh, protect their own country. Uh -huh. But but then later on, he 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 listened to the uh, um, the idea of communism from China and Soviet Union. So um, uh, um and, and then he become greedy. He be, he want power. He wanted power. Okay, as far as I, I believe, he 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 did what he could. To gain all the power from, um, uh, and then as, uh, associated with the the, the 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 world communism, which is China and Soviet Union, to gain the power. Remember, during that time, the North Vietnam heavily dependent on the China and the Soviet Union, um, and 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 even though in the money, the money, the money bills were, were printed in Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, the, the North Vietnam totally dependent on the world communism, China and Soviet Union. Yeah, it's clear in your book that you have an intense hatred for communism. Um, why, why is it? What is it about communism that you hate so much? How many people they have killed? They kill millions of people. I, I feel so sad for the, uh, the NVA, the North uh, Vietnamese soldiers, because they didn't know any better. They, was, they, were, they were deceived into their propaganda because under communism is a dictatorship. You you do what I said or you be gone. I, I have the gun in your head. That's the dictatorship. You had to give up your rights. You have to give up all the dignities or uh, whatever your freedom, your um, uh, your rights, your human rights, and everything else, and uh, your, your your own belief, you have to give it to God. Only one person is you have to believe in Ho Chi Minh. In Ho Chi Minh. Yes, they call it the father of the country, hmm. or the uncle. Yeah, Uncle Ho. Yeah. Uncle Ho. We are the human beings. We, we we don't we don't want it to be we, we want it you 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 want to treat others like you want it to be treated mm. you want to have respect okay you you want to 
understand and 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 trying to 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 see um you know other uh, uh, perspective and we aren't going to learn about it but under communism no either you do or you don't and you be killed mm -hmm. or you go be going you go be harmed you're going to hurt uh -huh. and 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 talking about how many people first i wanted to, un, uh, to, to um, tell you that the um the north um vietnamese soldiers they didn't know any better they was thing watching your uh, in, in their mind was they they need to fight so they can rescue the south which is under dominated by the americans under uh, um, mis uh, were uh, mistreated by the americans they had to come they had to go uh, uh, invaded the south so they can rescue the south vietnamese that's what they were told we're going to right south to so rest. they didn't know any better and you know what um if one one american um die is 12 nva die it's about the the ratio. The ratio. Yeah. Uh huh. One American died. Probably three of the South Vietnamese died, and twelve uh, NVA died. So you're talking about millions and millions of young North Vietnamese got killed, and they don't even care. The government doesn't care. No, they they're going to care. They own they own their by the middle. You will sacrifice for their uh, uh, for other say Uncle Ho, they followed their their, their 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 path of you know killing without really understanding uh, the understanding the truth. Yeah, wow. and that what happened. And even though as I say it's, it's it's so sad. I mean I I don't know some um, people you know like show you the the common show you and everything like that. They just don't know any better, and 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 they do what they told, you know. But in the south and at the freedom democracy side, a free world side, we respect people. We have uh, a dignity. We 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 we, we, we respect their opinions. They, we give them having their voice, their voices. So we all can learn from it. Um, How old were you when you decided to flee South Vietnam? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm understanding what it is that motivates you. You are just incredibly persistent um, because how many times do you try to flee South Vietnam before you actually succeed? I thought totally number of, uh, of, of tries was 11 times so, so obviously yeah, what, you're a persistent person how how old right. were you when you decided to i was uh, started by 17 18 and 19. i was the, the time it took me about close to two years then i finally successfully escaped this was obvious that there are no longer any future there for me and i knew i must find a way to escape just like million of my desperate, frightened people who risked their life to escape communist oppressions. I knew I wanted to follow the path, the path that my brother and sister have been fighting for, the path of freedom. I still remember so well how our men and women fought for freedom. I'm talking about, I remember the time that I saw the South Vietnamese soldiers and American soldiers was stood together fighting for, for, for us all. When they withdrew, um, the American withdrew from my village. Since they left my village, I tried to follow the path, but the path didn't come easy for me. I risked my life trying to escape with 11 attempts before I finally made it to the ocean. But the danger did not stop there. Our small boat was very crowded, but that's people. We sailed for five days a night in the deep sea with strong winds and big waves. And this tiny, unworthy watercraft did not reach any destination. We lost. Water and food running out, fuel almost gone, and worst storm was about to come. People on the boat knew they were facing imminent death. 
we began praying to God and asking God to take our soul to heaven so our body could sink to the deepest ocean floor. Our desert journey was full of great danger and horror. Our little helpless boat was not just facing strong storm and big waves. We were facing the worst nightmare from the Thai pirates, the animal cruelty, inhumane pirates, beaten, robbed everyone and raped the women in front of their husbands and families. And then in many cases, they just killed the entire helpless people on board. We're facing in, uh, uh, danger in many different forms, from the government, from the soldiers, from the, um, uh, the pirates, uh, from, from, from the evil forces in the jungles, um, uh, uh, from the natures. The storms, yeah. The storms. More, uh, more than millions, a million people escaped uh, by boat. But I believe it's close to half sank their body in the in the deep ocean floor more so you so very very many of the south vietnamese who fled vietnam um did not survive there were storms there were pirates oh yes there were yes starvation probably dying of thirst oh yes oh yes yes and that that, that the engine broke down the engine. food running out they had no more supply no more fuel and on and in many cases, they, uh, their, their, their boats, uh, their little boats stranded in the middle of the ocean. They ran out of food and then they finally they, they eat each other. Whoever died, they eat that bodies so they can survive. Can you believe that? Yeah, so we're, I mean, we're talking about um, people who are obviously highly motivated to get out of south vietnam right. and get somewhere else we traded our life for freedom that's what we said and when that's the time that we step on that little wooden boat to escape i know that even my family we realize we're dead we have accepted the 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 the, 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 the fate Yes, we should pray, you know, and, and, and that's why we are so grateful for big ship, like for, my, for my, myself, the German ship, they went around, the screw, the, 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 uh, the cruising around the, along the coast of South Vietnam. Yeah, what is the name of the German ship that rescued you? Cap Anamur. Cap Anamur. Yes, and, and you're saying that when you got on the small boat, this is your eleventh attempt. You had, and you described them in your memoir. Previous attempts to to get out of South Vietnam, you finally do get on this boat, and you say that when you got on this boat, you accepted the fact that there was a good chance you would not survive. Exactly. And you, but you're willing to. We make were lost. I'm sorry. We were lost in the oceans. Our compass was broken. And we have more than 100 people on, on board. We, uh, uh, children, men and women. More yeah. than 100. So, uh, well, and then I need to tell you this. On the fifth day, we almost ran out of fuel, uh, supplies and water and, and, and food, okay? But also the weather gotten worse and worse, worsening. And on that fifth night, our fifth day, we still don't see anything. We were planning like only three, two days or three days. We will arrive to either Singapore or Malaysia, to the shore of Malaysia. But we lost. You know, the, the compass didn't, it was broken. We didn't know where we were. Wow. And, 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 and the thing is, is the, and then on that, on that evening of the fifth day, if we, if we did not, see by that angel, the, angel, the cap the German ship. Let me, let me describe it to you. And I, I remember clearly on that evening, I see a little, little black dot far, far beyond the horizon. And I, I'm, I'm just said, oh, that would be an island. So we, everybody said, oh, well, let's head into that black dot. It's probably an island. A suit could be Malaysia or Singapore. 
but at closer we get closer to we get it happened to be a big giant ship and we know oh lord we know that we at that moment we know that we we were still alive mm. yes what? but that on and and when we got rescued into that uh, on board on that big ship that evening that evening was the worst storm. The captain of the ship came and talked about, spoke to us. He said, if we don't, if we don't rescue you guys, you, you'll be all gone. We, we, can, we, can, we can withstand that storm. But so the, it's, it's, yeah. So a, a big storm comes, and had you not been rescued. By this big ship, your little ship certainly would not have. No, exactly. I would have been food for feet, for, 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 for fish for <laughs> many decades already. Wow. What feeling did you have when you, because originally you were concerned because somebody called down to your boat, somebody was speaking Vietnamese, and originally you were worried it was a ship from the Viet Vietnamese government. There we go, yes, yeah. yes. I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah. We were so happy that we saw the big ship, but we didn't know. We had no idea what it, what it was. And and many of, and from my from my um, uh, knowledge, we we understood that many of the escaping uh, boat got got recaptured by the uh, uh, you know by the communist ship. And then they're brought back to this uh, Vietnam to the shore and then sent them to the prison or, 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 or labor camp. But this day, first, we, we didn't see the, 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 uh, the, the flag of the Vietnam. So we thought it was good. But then until that, uh, um, the guy in the ship, he happened to be Vietnamese because he also was rescued by that ship. And he volunteered to come to that ship to help uh, the boat people. How gracious is that? Is it really? So until he's, he, he spoke Vietnamese or out, um, uh, spoke into the loudspeaker, out to the, to our little boat, we said, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> we thought it's, <laughs> it's a communist ship. But and then they, 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 they said themselves, they said, oh no, they the German ship. Yeah. And, at that and time, then they calm was... everybody down. Yeah. Yes, and then come every now and then uh, they they came to the rescue and they, uh, they they went through the process of take it take us to the uh, bishop. Um, what thoughts or feelings did you have when you set foot on that big ship and you knew that you had been rescued and that you were now going to be able to live outside of of Vietnam? I keep, um, I still, until today, I still keep, uh, uh, keep thinking about that moment. And surely and truthfully, I'm still alive today. Even though I went through so much with, in this country and everything and, 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 and struggling with life, but I try to stay alive because of that moment. Because I was born again. I was born again. I, I, I could have been killed in uh, so many different ways. I could have been like, uh, treated like animals in, in many different ways. So when I step, I mean, the moment that I climbed up to the uh, uh, rope, ladder rope into the bishop, I was so happy. I'm on my feelings. And then until I step my foot, foot into that um, uh, ship, oh my God, I look, I just said, oh, thank God. I'm alive. I said to myself, I'm alive. Hmm. Right. Where did, the, where did the ship take you? They took us to the uh, 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 Philippines uh, Islands. Filipino Islands. They took it to the refugee camp, the island called Palawan, where they have a, a, a Vietnamese refugee camp there. 
So they took it there and for us to uh, for processing. How long were you at the camp? I was uh, almost uh, for two camps a year and a half. Um, usually, because I have my, my brother who escaped before I did, he came to America. So I have the opportunity or the reason to say I wanted to come to America. But my um, uh, 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 my thing was if I got rescued by any ship, I had to go to that that country. I was supposed to come to to, to come to German Germany instead of America, but. Um, because I have my brothers here living in America. So I want to claim that status. I want to re reunite with my brothers. Right. But that process was taken much longer. So usually it takes a few months for people to come to, come to America. But for me at that time, it was uh, a year and a half. Because you were denied entry into the United States two yes. times, right? Right. Three times. Three times. Yes. So here's another example of your persistence. They say, no, you can't come to the United States. You should go to Germany. <laughs> you, you yes, another example of the... persistence, perseverance. That's right. Uh, and on the fourth... Exactly. I was hot headed. <laughs> <laughs> but the fourth try, you get back to the States. What are you right. getting to the States? What is your strongest memory of being in the camp? Well, the number one say, the number one reason. I have to say, we had reason to live, to live um, calm and cool, because the motive here now is we, we came to freedom shore. It doesn't matter how hard it would be in the refugee camp. Mm. But I remember we had to go get up early, go and get water, and 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 and, and stand on life for food. Uh, you know, even the uh, sanitary was horrible, and all that. It's tough. It's very tough. You know, but we anything, anything would be better than living living in Vietnam with communism at that time. Wow. And you knew that you were going somewhere. It would be Germany, maybe Canada or France. You wanted to get to the United States and you eventually do get to the United States. What is your very first memory of being in the United States? Wow. It's like um, I, I came to a different world. When I, I was staying in the refugee camp and, you know, finally got through to uh, go to my America and I got, I got the airplane ticket to come to my America and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, that flight. And then we, I came to Honolulu and then I found San Francisco. And I look at everything, it's just like a totally different world. Change, black and white. Oh my gosh, man. Doing the whole journey of that, just come to the United States. It's just like unreal, surreal, so unbelievable, incredible. I can I can I couldn't believe for myself for a million years that this came true. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So um the reason, even though I deny to come to the America. The for a few times, and I been persistent to ask to reapply because I know I have met the American GI there, and above all, I want to unite, reunite with my brothers. Okay, even though I'm still young, I have no idea so much about the meaning of freedom and democracy. I have very little. I know that I wanted to be free. But the meaning, the, the deep in my conscience, the, uh, in this free world is way beyond what, what I ever thought. Back then when I was a little boy or a, a young man, you know? And that's why when I came here, even though how hard, I, I have nothing, no, no money. Was, I just stayed with my brothers and started to learn English, then go back to school. And then I, I went, uh, uh, I came to college and I got a, a two year degree and on and on, but something deep in me, 
that I said, I still can't believe that I live in the country. That I can see here now is just opportunities and dignities and free loving people, respectful to each other. And that's why after five years in this country, I decided to join the US Navy. I joined the US Navy so that I could serve and give back to my great new motherland. Yes, I was standing tall side by side with my fellow service men and women to help protect our beautiful and decent world of free enterprise and democracy. I was so proud and happy to serve my new country on the magnificent aircraft carrier called USS America, which is a beautiful name. And here, I wanted to put an emphasis on this. I escaped communism with 11 attempts. I was determined to come to the United States of America. Then I was so blessed to serve in the most, uh, to have the most opp a precious opportunity to serve the United States of America on the um, United States ship, USS America. It's just America all the way. Just a beautiful name, a beautiful meanings. What sat inside of me, even until this day, I still serving. Um, I know life is not easy. I'm facing so much struggles, um, uh, problems, miseries, and everything. But I at least have my freedom here. What did you do in the Navy? What was your job in the Navy? I was an aviation machinist mate. At first, I have a computer degree. When I joined the Navy, I have a computer degree called data processing um, AA degree in computers. I, my plan was I wanted to be like a computer programmer or thing like that in the Navy for computers. When I joined, at first I said, yes, okay, you can. But then they, the guy would told me again, oh, you can't, I can't, I, I, I couldn't be because I wasn't, I didn't have American citizenship. I didn't have the, 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 the clearance oh, at that time. The security so they, he gave me some other option. I said, oh, don't, don't, don't you want to be like a mechanic? I said, oh, I was a mechanic because as you, you, you read the book, you see, I was a, a fishing boat engine mechanic. I put that boat engine all together. I installed the engine piece per piece all together by myself. Yeah, you, you, you describe in your memoir how right. you became an engine mechanic and you built the engine for the boat right. that right. you took to, to freedom. Yeah. Right. That, and, and then until he, he, he mentioned, oh, uh, you want to be a mechanic? How about uh, uh, a mechanic to fix an airplane? I said, well, that's great. I want to learn to fix engine in airplane. Mm -hmm. So I said, how about aviation machinist mate? So I took that right. And they sent me to A school in Millington, Tennessee for that aviation machine with me. And then that's how I stationed on flight deck on, 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 on the uh, carrier, sure. USS America. Yeah. And every now and then I, I, I work in the hangar deck, but every now and then I came to flight deck and launch an air, airplane. And um, you write about some of the tours your ship went on and, and you were in the Atlantic, but then you also went to the Pacific. And you said that when your ship was in the Pacific, you you would look out and hope to see Vietnamese refugees that, that you could help rescue from, from the Pacific yes. Ocean. Beside, beside knowing the faith, the poor faith on the poor Vietnamese people, the escapees, the trying to please the evil. Beside that, but I, I also have another um, motive for this. I have. I, when I left Vietnam, I left my girlfriend, my very first love. Mm. We were trying to es escape together, but didn't, didn't, didn't succeed. Until I, 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 I that 11th time, I, I did it on, my, on myself and then I said, but I was keep longing for her. Uh, I, I, we were still um, in contact between Vietnam and, 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 and here when I was in the Navy. And I was to dream that, oh, I would see the boat people in, in the water. 
people escape in Vietnam, and especially I would dream to have my girlfriend there. That she would see her on one of the boats. Right, right. Oh. So whenever I have, even though we work long hours on the carrier, as you know about, 18 hours, 16 hours, but whenever free time, I came to the side uh, along the carrier, I looked out the water and keep dreaming and kept dreaming, dreaming and, and see. But, but the, um, one of the worst thing is um, uh, we went through so much. Uh, many people killed, died, and in, in many ways uh, for freedom. I, I, I just can't have enough feeling to describe that. And I was one of them. And that's the reason why. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I joined the US Navy. Why not Army? Why not Air Force? Why not the Marines? But the Navy. To, to hope to be part of a rescue operation. Yes, 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 uh, yes. To right. come back to that water and uh, to see, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, have, and, you been, have you ever been back to Vietnam? Yes, um, many times, and uh, I, uh, I came back to uh, um, uh, when my mother was alive. My, my, my father passed away when I was in the Navy. Mm. I, couldn't I couldn't come back to see him, to, to, you know, to see him off the earth. But when my, my, my mother's still there, so when he, she's still alive, when she was still alive, after I finished my school, the, the doctor of pharmacy here, um, after I got out of the Navy, and then I came back just to see her, to talk to her, to be close to her, spend time with her um, several times. Were you, when you went back to Vietnam for the first time, were you nervous? Oh, totally. Very nervous. Were you worried that they might arrest you or something? Yes, even though I know, I understand that, uh, uh, I understood that m many people went back and many people like me have status like a refugee, escaped Vietnam and came back. Even though so, I still was got um, and become, uh, be, 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 became very nervous when it came to the airport. When you went through the airport, did the, the person in the airport when this person saw your passport, did he or she say anything to you? You know, one of the things that we, we all had to learn because um, the, uh, when we threw the gate for the passport and visa, we need to put money. Oh. We need to put money in, in, into that visa or, or passport, either $20, $10, and things like that for the guy who took that. So can he let it, let it go? And you <laughs> know, okay? I, I, I was I was one of them. I was I was scared. I don't know what happened and things like that. So I put you know a little bit of money in there and and, and and get through so I can see my mom. So everything was okay. Mm -hmm. When you when you talk to Vietnam veterans these days, what what do you say to Vietnam veterans? As you know, I'm a member a lifelong member of VFW Post, and my lifelong member of the, the, the uh, disabled American veterans. And I give speeches, thank you speeches to our Vietnam veterans in general, but all the veterans. I appreciate for my freedom here. So even though um, beside my speeches, my meeting with Vietnam veterans, but where, wherever, even then, now I go to the VA hospital, I see the guy with a Vietnam veteran um, cap on. I would came to him, shake his hand, and thank you for, for, for their service in Vietnam. So th their, their appreciation is tremendous to me. I still is, and forever. Because you, uh, you understand the nature of how our Vietnam were treated when they, when they came back to their own country. The Vietnamese, the, the the Vietnam veterans, when they came home from the war, how they, they were treated here. They come back home to their country, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were totally mistreated. And that's the reason why it's one of the motives that I wanted to be uh, uh, spread my voice, um, uh, speaking to thank them, and, and to show them 
uh, our uh, the, the, the three Vietnamese are uh, gratitude and appreciation to all the uh, uh, Vietnam veterans and all freedom defenders in, 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 in America. 